Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today we're going to be taking a deep dive and talking about Tottenham's new sporting director, Johan Lang. But before we get into this, if you are new to the channel, leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs and hit that notification bell because it lets you know when I've gone live. Now, let's get into the video. So I was actually asked to do this video by someone in the comment section. I'll put the comment on screen right now and I was having an arm whether to do one about Johan Lang. But... Is quite big news for the football club. We have finally announced a sporting director come technical director type. You know, the names are a bit jargony, but it pretty much is a sporting director, someone who's going to come in and deal with, you know, mainly transfers, but sort of take a bit of pressure off of the likes of Scott Munn, who arrived at the club in uh, the summer. Obviously, transfers take it a bit away from Ange Postacoglu so you know he identifies certain players but obviously it will now be Johan Lang's job to sort of really piece together what Ange needs for his jigsaw puzzle and then obviously we also have Fabio Paratici who is still some sort of advisory but I did a video on that recently so if you want to see why uh, Fabio Paratici is still the secret weapon at Tottenham hit the link just above my head right now and watch that afterwards. So now into Johan Lang who is he and I'm going to read a little bit from the BBC website on this one. So Tottenham appointed Johan Lang as technical director. Langer has been in a previous role at Aston Villa but will join Spurs from the 1st of November. Spurs chief football officer Scott Munn said Johan has demonstrated an excellent track record of scouting youth and signing many talented and successful youth and senior players. So there you go. Obviously, Lang has been at Aston Villa for the last couple of years. Before that, he was at Copenhagen. And we all know Copenhagen is a bit of a breeding ground for incredible talent in Denmark as well. Obviously, his native country. But at Aston Villa, obviously, we know the situation that has happened at that club. They've brought in Unai Emery. They've brought in Monchi, obviously, which is sort of like Unai Emery's partner in crime when it comes to transfers and building a club. So obviously, Johan Lang has left Aston Villa and is coming to Tottenham. And I can tell why we've gone for someone like Johan Lang. All you have to do, really, is look at his transfer record at Aston Villa. And before I get into this, I want to say, Aston Villa, I believe, you know, if there are any fans watching this who are Aston Villa fans, I think you're a massive club, honestly. I think you're one of the biggest clubs in uh, England, in the Premier League, Currently, you know, obviously have won a European title, one more than Tottenham could say, uh, the European Cup. But, you know, and I spent a lot of time with Gabby Von at TalkSport, so uh, the Aston Villa is rubbing off on me. But I believe, you know, when you look at Aston Villa in recent history, you know, they went down to the Championship, got promoted, nearly got relegated again. Uh, and the way they've sort of processed since coming back to the Premier League and built a foundation is... Some of it is up to Johan Lang. Like, the signings he, have, he has made for Aston Villa, maybe, not to sound rude, have been a bit above the parapet. You know, they picked up some incredible players who, you know, they beat certain other teams to their signatures. You know, I'm going to go through some of the players right now, and I believe that they're really strong candidates. Even the ones that haven't played out and haven't worked out, they were such like impressive names to get on their books. So here are some of the names. You know, Ollie Watkins scouted really impressively from Exeter City, signed for a very impressive fee. You've got Martinez, who a World Cup winner now for um, Argentina, who they got from Arsenal. Matty Cash was a stat-based signing who they plucked out of the championship. I know some there, you know, Ross Barkley and stuff like that. Maybe not that good, but anyway. Emi Buendia was a statement signing when they made that. Same with Leon Bailey, who is actually coming quite good, I think, since um, Diaby's come in. It sort of offered him a bit of competition. Luca Digne was a surprise signing. They beat a lot of teams to his signature. Danny Ings didn't work out, but they still was able to pluck him out of nowhere, but they sold him on. Philip Coutinho, even the signing of Philip Coutinho, which I think they started on loan then made him a permanent that was quite a statement signing obviously hasn't worked out at all when he's left the club now but I still think that was a quite a good signing Diego Carlos Leander Dendonka you know Bubakar Samara they got a free and he was being linked with the likes of United I think as well so you know they have shown that they've you know done really well in the transfer window obviously the summer just gone might have been more of a Monchi influence but they still got the likes of Tielemans who I know he's been criticised but still Diaby you know um Pal Torres. So, you know, they, you know, Villa are really doing well when it comes to the signings. And what Johan Lang has experience in is stat-based signings. And guess what Tottenham have moved towards this summer? 
stat based signings. I'm thinking Mickey van der Ven, I'm thinking Alejo Veliz, I'm thinking Ashley Phillips. You know, the list is endless. It is just that is the way we are heading when it comes to our signings for Tottenham Hotspur. And obviously, you know, people will say, you know, you signed James Madison, who's proven and stuff like that. But, you know, the, the way we negotiate transfers as well, we are not really in the same ballpark as some of your bigger clubs in the Premier League. So this stat-based era we are moving into is more our, you know, realm, I'd say. You know, and maybe we have a chance in transfer windows to beat the likes of Brighton, to beat the likes of Brentford to signings, because maybe we are a bigger club than them, but we can offer them more money and maybe the chance of European football when we get that hopefully down the line under Andrew Postacoglu. So it is that sort of convincing factor. And, you know, obviously these clubs that I've listed there, Brentford and Brighton, are doing that. But we're sort of, you know, trying to nick their idea, you could say. But I'm all for it. I think it's really good for the club. And there was a really interesting article on Football.London about Johan Lang. And it sort of says, like, what will he bring to Tottenham? And I really like this, so I'm going to read the extract now. It says that Johan Lang has a vast and extensive knowledge of European football, and he had a coffee with reporters not long after joining Villa, and it was pretty clear just how obsessed he was with football. He'll bring new methods that will be very much data-led. Lang is about stats and numbers, and prior to Villa signing Matty Cash in 2020, the Dane sat down with the player and his family in Greece and went through data on his laptop, outlined just how good a fit the ex-Forest man would be. And you know from the signings we made this summer, um, and Postacoglu was convincing people on his project. I'm thinking, you know, James Madison, Mickey van der Ven, he rung them all up and sort of said, this is what I want and this is how it's going to be. So it's now sort of expanding that portfolio of having people in the club who are more football people. Don't get me wrong, I have been a massive critic of Daniel Levy and I feel like he is a good businessman he knows how to run the club in a business sense but when it comes to day-to-day -day football running such as transfers and also you know just letting managers and you know giving transfer fees and opportunities to them it just doesn't work it just seems to always butt heads and that's what's happened in the last 20 or so years with so many different managers so bringing in certain people who are more football people are better for this football club and we will see it and I'm really promised that this is going to be a really good signing because you know I just think there's been a bit of a you know we we went through a different pit people we had like Paul Mitchell we've had Baldini we had you know Paratici as well and even though Paratici was sort of ticking along nicely it was sort of a mismatch because obviously we had the likes of Conte and Nuno and the players that they were signing were not fit. And maybe Paratici is better in this more advisory role. Not many people want to deal with Daniel Levy in the Premier League. You know, we saw it with the Harry Kane saga this summer and we had to sell him basically to Bayern Munich to get one, the fee we wanted and two, you know, we just don't deal with Premier League teams. It just doesn't happen in the Premier League era. So... You know, maybe people want to deal with Johan Lang a bit more. Maybe he's a bit more, you know, approachable. And hopefully we could nick some players here and there from the likes of, uh, you know, other Premier League teams to really build out Tottenham's team for the future. And we're already seeing, you know, the squad has been brought down significantly when it comes to the age. You know, there's less pressure on certain players in the forward line. You know, the forward line is quite rich now, which is good when everyone's fully fit. So, yeah, very promising. Also, he's good on the youth part of it and we are now building quite a nice youth team you know we've got the likes of, you know the likes of all these players coming through the under 21s are smashing it so far this season so yeah very promising times ahead so let me know in the comments down below what do you make of Johan Lang do you think it's a good appointment for the future or are you a bit you know suspect because he signed the likes of Ross Barkley and Philip Coutinho maybe let me know in the comments down below and if you have enjoyed it smash a like on the video subscribe to Sunny Talks Birds and hit that notification bell as well and I've been Sunny and I'll see you pretty soon and a ciao